Hey guys, Jay here. In this video, I'll be showing you how to host a Python script on a Google Cloud server for free. I'll also be showing you how to do a few more helpful things, such as how to set up the script to run on a schedule and how to use Tmux. This video is a little bit technical, but be patient, and I will explain how everything works. Don't be intimidated by working in the command line. It's not quite as scary as it seems. One slight disclaimer, you will need a valid debit or credit card when creating an account, but it will not be used unless you choose to get a higher performance server. The first thing you need to do is log into your Google account and go to console.cloud.google.com. Choose the country that you reside in, choose your email preferences, and agree to the terms of service, and then click the Agree and Continue. Click Activate, and then fill out all the fields again, click Agree and Continue. Now you'll be prompted for payment details. As you can see on the left side, there is no auto charge after the free trial ends. It's just needed to make sure that you aren't a robot and in case you want to upgrade your account later. Go ahead and fill out your information. I'll blur mine out for obvious reasons. Once you've finished filling out your info, click Start My Free Trial. This may take a few minutes. Once the page loads, go ahead and click Compute Engine. Once it's finished getting ready, click the Create button. Again, this could take a few minutes. Choose an instance name if you'd like, and select the region and zone nearest you. Now the important part. Select the specs for your cloud server. This is where you need to be mindful of price. If you want to host for free, select the specs that I do. If you want higher performance, select the specs that work for you. I'm going to select the Micro One Shared Virtual CPU. You can see that there are a lot of OS options. I kept the default settings. Once you're finished, click Create. Once again, you may have to wait a few minutes. Once this is finished, click the SSH button. If you've ever worked with Linux before, you may be familiar with SSH. For those of you who aren't familiar, SSH stands for Secure Shell, and it allows you to remotely and securely access a Linux machine's command line or terminal. Unlike Windows, most tasks on Linux can be accomplished through the command line. Now, this may seem intimidating if you've never worked in the command line before, but as I mentioned earlier, it's not as scary as it may seem. The first thing you're going to do is make sure that Python is installed. Type python hyphen uppercase v to see what version of Python you have. Usually Python is installed by default on Linux, so you'll probably have it. And then you can also type python3 space hyphen capital V to see what version of Python 3 you have installed. If for some reason you don't have Python installed, you can install it by typing sudo apt hyphen get install python 3.6 or whichever version you need. As you can see, pip was not installed on my machine by default. So you can install it by typing sudo apt get install python3 hyphen pip. sudo is short for super user do, which is similar to the Windows run as administrator. apt hyphen get means that you want the advanced packaging tool, apt apt, to get and install python3 hyphen pip which is, I guess, Linux's equivalent of a program, so to speak. Type Y and press Enter when you're asked if you would like to continue with the installation, and then wait. The next tool we will install is called Tmux. We will use Tmux to open a virtual terminal window, which will allow a script to continue to run even after we've closed the main SSH window. Type sudo apt get install Tmux, and type Y and press Enter when prompted. Once Tmux is installed, you have everything you need. If you found this video, then you're probably somewhat familiar with Linux. However, for those who are not, I'll go ahead and show you a few commands. The first is the ls command. Since we're in the command line, you can't see all the files and folders. ls is short for list and will list all the files and folders in your current directory. The next command is the cd command, which stands for change directory. Type cd and then the name of the subdirectory to change to that directory. If you need to go back to the parent directory, you can type cd space, and two periods, and that goes to the parent directory. And the last command you need to know for navigating the Linux file system is the mkdir or make directory. This makes a subdirectory in the current directory, as we can see here if we type ls. Let's change this subdirectory by typing cd space my first directory. If we had multiple files to transfer, we could use an FTP or file transfer protocol software but that is way outside the scope of this video and a topic for another time. We will use the nano text editor to create and edit a new file. Type nano and then the name of the file you want to create. 
make sure it ends with a .py. Then you can use Control C and then Control V to copy and paste your Python code into the Nano text editor. You can see I'm just typing mine out. And then to save the script, press Control X, then press Y, and then Enter. Now that you have the script transferred over, I will show you how to run it. First, you can run it by typing Python or Python 3 if you're using Python 3, followed by the name of the script, while you're in the same directory as the script. The limitation of this is that A, you have to manually run the script, and B, if you close the SSH window, then the script will stop running. To avoid the script stopping, we can use tmux. Type tmux to start a new tmux session, and you can see that we're now in a new terminal window. The terminal will stay active even when we close the SSH window. If you need to access the tmux session at a later time to stop, restart, or change the bot or script, you can do so by opening up the secure shell window on your cloud console page and typing tmux ls to list the active tmux sessions, then tmux a for attach, and then hyphen t followed by the ID number of the session you would like to join. You can even use tmux to have multiple sessions running at once. If you wanted to latch launch another script instead of connecting to the already running script, you could just type tmux. And then to disconnect from a tmux session, type control D. To set up a script to run on a schedule, we will set up a cron job. Cron is short for command run on. To set up a new cron job, type cron tab hyphen E, and you'll be taken to this text file. Use the down arrow key to navigate to the bottom of the file. The way a cron tab works is described up here, but I'll go ahead and write a new cron job and then explain which part does as a brief overview. Each of these columns represents a certain time period. The M represents minute, the H is hour, the DOM is day of month, for example, the 28th of February, the MON is month, 1 being January, 12 being December, and DOW is day of week, with 0 representing Sunday and 6 being Saturday. Finally, the command section is where you enter the command that you want cron to run. In this case, I have entered the absolute reference to the script that I've created and told it to run with Python 3. You can see what I've typed down here. Right now, the script is set to run at 1.01 a.m. on the 1st of January when it is a Monday. For reference, the next time that January 1st is on a Monday is in 2024, and this script will not run until then. A much more likely scenario is that you want to run your script every five minutes. So we can replace each of these values with stars, which represent any. Now, instead of only running on a Monday, the script runs on any day. The star is any. If all the values are stars, then the script will run any minute. To make it run every five minutes, we can divide this star by five. Now the script will run any day of the month, any month, any day of the week, and any hour, and it runs every five minutes. To save the cron tab, type control X, and then press Y, and then press enter. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something by watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comment section. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and give me a subscribe. Have a great day. I'm out.